I'm standing in a high tunnel full of g fresh ginger ready to be harvested. Uh, did you know that fresh local ginger is actually um, garnering $7.99 a pound at a local retail store in, in Richmond? People, are re it's really in demand, but there's still a lot of education that has to happen with ginger for people to make it a daily staple. Um, for instance, uh, I'm Filipino, but Asians, we, we take ginger like a medicine and I pretty much will eat an inch of fresh ginger a day. So I go through a lot of ginger in my life, but I think it helps with keeping us um, healthy and flexible as we age. So um, let me just kind of show you a little bit about the ginger. And you can tell, I mean, there's nothing better than growing a high, a high tunnel full of ginger. It actually, it actually grows um, like a mound. And you can see right here the ginger. You have to keep pushing it. You know, it keeps on pushing itself out of the ground. And then the farmer keeps on lumping it up there. But it goes all the way across under the ground. And as big as this canopy is of the ginger, that's as big as the body is underneath. So it's kind of funny. You think about you think about plants, but when you see how they look on top, there's a lot more going on underneath. So that's a beautiful thing about plants. So you can see here, but um, a lot of the work in partnership with Dr. Rafi is just educating consumers and and farmers about the uses of ginger. We'll be having a ginger and turmeric field day every November we have that and and people can come from all over um, to learn about ginger, its medicinal uses, its beauty uses and even taste some products about it and see how to grow it. And even the leaves can be used, the stems can be used um, and you can eat them all. So uh, a lot of times with marketing, we just have to let consumers know what you can do with the products. So none of it really needs to be thrown away. It can all be marketed. You know how the, when you buy, go to the grocery store, typically you have mature ginger and it has a brown skin. But here you can see that this ginger doesn't yet, has not yet developed any skin really. It's white and it looks that way throughout the actual plant. So when you store this in the fridge, you would just, you would cut it like so. I actually cut it and then I make a tea out of this part. I drink that and um, I don't even dry it. It just has a gentle lemony taste. I like that in my tea and I don't have any sugar. And I just cut it with my scissors and I stick it in like an open Ziploc bag, an open one and, and washed. And then it lasts for like a week with the stem. But if you were to cut it and leave it in there without the stem on, and not in an open plastic bag, then it seems to not keep as long. But also, you don't have to store fresh ginger in a plastic bag or in the fridge. You can actually freeze it whole, uh, just like, like this if you wanted to cut it. You know, you cut it there and freeze it because most people have limited freezer space. And then you could eat it all, all year round. But what I do is I just cut it in the pieces that are for a stir fry or a juice. Um, that way I can just put the frozen piece in if I have a lot of ginger. Because if you were to grow one ginger piece in your yard and it, one plant like probably yields like three pounds, three to, three to five pounds depending on if it's happy, then you know you have an awful lot of ginger to use up because typically a person will who really likes ginger will eat like a half inch to an inch a day and this here is pretty much an inch see <laughs> for my hand my thumb all right